Hi friends. So today we're going to be talking about chapter 10, which is beginning and ending the speech. That is, we're going to talk about introductions and conclusions, how to begin and how to finish your speech. So I want to use the analogy of an airplane. Now you probably are aware that the experts say that the uh, most dangerous times in an airplane trip is the takeoff and the landing. And if we compare that to a speech with it, the beginning of the speech and the conclusion, it is the beginning and the conclusion that can cause a lot of problems. So I want to make that analogy with the idea that you want to put time into uh, developing your, your introduction and your conclusion. Now you will spend a lot more time in the body of the speech and your main points and chronologically you should really develop the main points first, then de develop the, the introduction, the beginning, and then finally do the conclusion. The reason we do it that way is because if you do the body first, your main points, then in your introduction you know what you're aiming toward. Otherwise, you might miss the target if you don't have that developed ahead of time. And for a conclusion, you absolutely want to have the, the speech completed uh, in order to so you know how you're going to uh, finish the speech when it's done. So body with main points first, all your research and everything, complete that first, then do the beginning slash intro, and then finally do the, uh, the conclusion, how you're going to end the speech. So let's start by talking about the introduction. Now, as I said, on an airplane trip, if, the air, if, the, if you can get that thing off the ground and flying, then everything tends to go pretty smoothly. But if you can't get it off the, off the ground in the first place, you could have some problems. So we wanna talk about that in terms of developing a great introduction to the speech and then, uh, move into the speech and you should be smooth sailing. The other concept to think about is uh, if you're, if the beginning of your speech does not go well and you're kind of flying low to the ground, you haven't gotten up high enough, then if you lose any, any uh, momentum or energy in the speech, you don't have a whole lot of give, a whole lot of room to recover. But if you start really well and get off the ground really high very quickly with your speech, then even if you lose some ground during the, the body of the speech, you have plenty of room in terms of how your audience is uh, listening and responding to your speech. So you want to begin really, really well. Okay, so the textbook is going to tell you there are four things you want to accomplish in your introduction. And let me just go through those and you want to use it as a checklist when you develop your introduction before you give your speech. Ask yourself, did I do these four things and did I do them well? So the And they do go in this order and just so you know, I've listened to thousands of speeches as I've told you before. You don't want to vary the order. It's not an option of which ones to go. The, not only are they the, these four items and probably nothing else, maybe one other thing, but don't mix up the order. They go in this order. This is the right order to do them. I don't want to sound too dogmatic about that, but yeah, I do. You want to do them in this order. Don't change the order because something will get missing if you do. So the first thing out of the four is number one, gain your audience's attention. Sometimes we call it an attention grabber, uh, but just get their attention. How are you going to get them to pay attention and get on board with your speech? You see, they're coming from all sorts of places and experiences. Some of them have other things on their mind. To be honest, many times it's more important than your speech. Nothing personal there, but they've got lives. And so we've got to do something that is going to grab their attention and hold them on while you get going in your speech. Now, the textbook will offer you a variety of different things. For example, a quote. I'm not a quote guy, but a quote. A, uh, something startling or shocking. I used to watch the news each week uh, when I was speaking each weekly. And I would look for a story that was weird. Something strange, something bizarre in the news. 
And I would try to then utilize that story because it's weird and unique and uh, attention grabbing, I would try to utilize that into my uh, presentation each week. So watch the news. But by far the best way to begin a speech, oh, first of all, let me tell you the worst way. <laughs> and some of us do it. The worst way is this. Hi, my name is Neil Montgomery, and today I'm going to be speaking to you about airplanes. Okay, good, they know my name. Good, they know my topic. That's really good. But that is one of the worst introductions you can make. Do not begin your speech that way. Instead, here is the best. The best is to tell a personal story. I remember when I was six years old and we were, I was taking my first airplane trip from uh, Los Angeles to San Jose. I actually do remember that event. I had an aunt and uncle up live there and we went there as a family. It didn't fly a whole lot. But with a, with a, a good sto personal story at the beginning, you're going to grab people's attention because people love hearing stories and if you're involved in it, that's even better. So what is your topic and what story, personal experience do you have that can either directly relate to the story for example, if I was giving a speech about Huskies, then telling a story about Huskies would be great. But sometimes you can draw a parallel uh, story and then connect them together. So begin with a story. Uh, second thing you want to do in your speech is you're going to reveal the topic. So you've got our attention, now you're going to reveal the topic. Now, I'll give you an illustration that shows you why you can't just assume everybody knows your topic. So if I told a story about uh, what year was it, the 1925 diphtheria epidemic in uh, Alaska, and they ended up having to uh, dog sled uh, the, the serum from Anchorage to Nome. And in fact, if you go to Central Park in New York today, there is a statue to the dog who was apparently one of the lead dogs in that uh, dog sled race, or not race, but race against time to get there, uh, named Balto. Anybody seen that statue? Well, it's there for that. There was a movie that came out probably, maybe you saw it when you were children, maybe even a little uh, earlier than that. My kids were small, uh, but my kids are 30 to 22 now. But uh, the, the name of the movie, it was an animated movie named Balto. And so I'm gonna use that. I'm gonna tell about the, the dog sled race. I remember the, 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 the musher, the guy who led this thing, his first name was Gunner. What a great name. I wish I knew that. I would have changed one of my kids' names to Gunner. Even my daughter, it's such a, like a cool name, Gunner. But anyway, I would tell all about that and how it, uh, they used you know, Siberian Huskies in, in uh, dog sledding in Alaska and the Iditarod race every year is kind of goes back to that first initial run and all this stuff about the the Iditarod and all that and the names of the Iditarod Iditarod dog winners one second is named Bacon <laughs> but anyway and the winner today gets I think a $25,000 prize get cash prize and a new pickup so when I go on and on, now here's the question, what is my speech going to be about? Well, the reality is from that introduction, you would have no idea. It could be about diphtheria. It could be about um, uh, 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 medications. It could be about Alaska. It could be about the Iditarod race. It could be about the dogs in the Iditarod race. It could be about Huskies. There's a thousand different things my speech could be about based on my introduction. Do not assume the, the introductory story automatically conveys what your speech is about. It is much better after you tell your speech, uh, and some, some are a little more clear, but just to say, so today I'm going to be talking about the Iditarod annual race in Alaska. Clear as a bell. There is no question that they're going to get it, and they're going to, you've got their attention with the story, 
but then make sure you tell them the topic. Do not just assume they're going to get it from the story. Okay, so now we've, we've got their attention. We know that they know that they know that we know that they know what the topic is. Third item, you want to establish credibility. Now, when you read chapter 17, they're going to have a full section on credibility, a lot more information. Uh, this chapter talks about it a little bit, but here's the thing about credibility. Credibility and goodwill is what you're going to establish. Credibility says, I am telling you that I am ready and prepared and equipped and uh, well rehearsed and well practiced to give this speech to you. Do not worry, I got this. So you could do it in one real simple sentence, but it really needs to be right here. After your uh, opening story to get their attention, after you told them the topic, all you have to do is say something simple like, in order to prepare for this speech today on the Iditarod, I have done plenty of research through uh, reading books and uh, going through articles, watching videos, and actually interviewing two people who have been in the Iditarod race. I'm making all that up, but you get the idea. So that establishes confidence that you know what you're doing and what is going to happen next is not going to be a waste of their time. Oh, he's practiced, he's prepared, he's studied, he's researched. Uh, so you're going to tell them the word, and I'm looking for that keyword research. Include the word research. In order to prepare for the speech, I have done plenty of research. Now, by the way, if you have had experience, Maybe your uncle was in the Iditarod. Maybe you were in the Iditarod. Throw that in there too. So I have, I've done research and I have personal experience through whatever it might be. So absolutely research. Everybody's gonna do research, but also throw in experience if that is true of you. It may not be, but if it's true of you, include uh, the, that experience. Now, research shows us if you don't mention your credibility at the beginning, you're going to lose ground if you try to mention it later on. Like if, if three minutes into the speech or before your first point or halfway through your first point, you say, oh, I've done plenty of research. In fact, here's one of the research sources that I found. You're losing ground. It's like fish. They go bad after three days. You're, if you don't establish your credibility at the beginning, that your credibility statement later on is not as impactful. So do it right there, number three. Finally, number four is preview your speech. Tell us what you're going to tell us. This is so important because it lays out a roadmap for your presentation. It tells your audience exactly where you're going so they're not gonna get lost. It's kind of laying out the groundwork and they're gonna say, okay, he's on point number one, point number two, and point number three. Now, to be honest, I knew when I would usually say my last point today, my third point, Quite often I spoke a little bit long and the audience would go, oh, good, thank goodness, he's almost done. It's almost time for lunch. I, you know, I can start picturing they're not paying attention anymore. They're trying to figure out where they're going to go for lunch after uh, the, the worship service. So, but of course, your audience is going to do that. But you want to lay that out for them. It tells them you know where you're going. It tells them when it's going to be done. And it gives them a preview so they're, they're checking off. They don't get lost. Yep, there was that first point. He said he was going to talk about that. Second point, yep. Third point, yep. It, it keeps them on track. Now, one other thing I want to mention about your introduction. Quite often, whether your speech is about... Uh, railroads or the game of Monopoly or uh, I'm just looking around my house here uh, Christmas or the city of Monterey there's a Monterey blanket on our uh, couch here city of Monterey whatever it is you quite often your first main point will be so today I'm gonna start by telling you the history of Monterey or the history of the uh, Winchester Mystery House. You ever been to the Mystery House in uh, Winchester Mystery House in San Jose? Or the Winchester Rifle. You're going to give us the history. That's very common. But sometimes you're not going to give us the full history. So right after you introduce the topic, you might even spend a few moments in your introduction giving us a brief history and take care of it there. Your first point's not history or second point, but you can do it very quickly. It's going to be an abbreviated 
version of the history right there in your introduction. So you can do it there after you introduce the topic and before you establish the credibility. So you can kind of slide that in there. Okay, I want to now switch to the conclusion. Now, in the conclusion, if we compare it with uh, airplane landing, there's two items that can happen with an airplane landing that can go bad. First of all, uh, and you might have, have done this, I don't know if they do this anymore or not, but when I was young, if the airplane airport was fogged in, and we have that in Los Angeles quite a bit, the airplane couldn't land safely. Maybe it's changed because of better technology now, but do you know what the airplanes would do? They would circle the airport. They would circle and circle and circle and wait until the uh, control tower told them it's their turn to land and they could land safely. Sometimes now they go to another airport, but circle, circle, circle. Sometimes they drop, fly out over the ocean, dump their fuel in case something goes wrong, and uh, then they would return to the airport. So sometimes speeches can go like that, that if you did not prepare your conclusion well, <coughs> You're talking, but you're still trying to figure out, how am I going to end this thing? And you're circling the airport. You're circling, 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 until something pops in your head of how to finish this speech. You don't want to do that. You want to have it worked out and clear in your mind how you're going to finish that speech. The second problem sometimes people have is they, for example, an airplane, let's say an airplane catches on fire. It's a cargo plane. Only one pilot's on board, nobody else, no passengers, just cargo. Plane catches on fire and the, the pilot says, I'm not going down with the plane. And so they open the door, put on, you know, have their parachute on, open the door and jump out and bail out and float to safety. And the airplane goes and crashes somewhere. Sometimes speeches end that way too. All the person says is, and uh, yeah, Thanks for listening to my speech. You know, good night and we'll see you later. <laughs> so you do not want to end your speech on that with the old bailout. You want to have a well-prepared uh, conclusion for how this speech is going to end smoothly, just like an airplane coming in for a smooth landing. So two things you want to accomplish in your conclusion. First, you want to summarize uh, the speech one more time. And usually we begin our conclusions by saying in conclusion, or to sum things up, or to wrap things up, or something similar to that. There aren't that many options. Sometimes people just uh, will pause at the end of their third point and then go into the conclusion. I want to have you ha do a verbal transition from your third point to your conclusion by saying something like, in conclusion. I'm going to be listening for it and grading on, do I hear you say something about, here's my conclusion, in conclusion, uh, to wrap things up. And then just tell us your main points. Here's a, here's a great one. So today we've talked about the Iditarod. We've talked about the uh, diphtheria background. We talked about the, uh, the changing of the route over the years. And we talked about the grand prize of the Iditarod. That's probably not a good one, but you get the idea. So now the audience says, yep, he said that. Oh yeah, he told me about that. And you're correct, he told me about that as well. It's a reminder one more time. Now, if you think about it, we told them what we were going to tell them in the introduction. We told them in the speech itself, the three points, right? They heard them first, second, and third. And then finally, we told them again what we told them in the conclusion. You've told them three times your speech, in outline form at least. Do you think by telling them that many times it's going to assist them in remembering what you spoke about? I think so. So give us a review. And then the second thing in the conclusion is you're going to give them something memorable, something to walk away with, something powerful, something memorable. Maybe it will be a quote if you're a quote person. Uh, maybe it will be uh, some kind of a finishing story. In fact, I think it's great if you began a story in, in the introduction and you don't finish the story. 
You leave them with a cliffhanger at the beginning of the story, and then you finally come back and say, do you remember that story I talked about in the introduction? Well, here's what happened in the story. You tell them uh, the rest of the story. What a great kind of book-ending strategy for your... I think that will make it very memorable. So, just those two things. Oh, the other final thing I want to say, I think, let me check here. I think that's everything. Uh, you do not want to start off with a new topic or information in your conclusion. Some get carried away and they start over again with a new point in the conclusion. Don't do that, just let it finish. You're probably not gonna be able to say everything about your topic anyway. Don't worry about it, just review the, the main points and give us something memorable and then call it quits. Do not come in for like an airplane that makes a dip landing and then takes off again. I think they did that in the movie Top Gun. Do you remember that? Uh, don't do that. You want to finish that thing off rather than start up again with another chunk of information that almost becomes a uh, fourth main point. Don't do that. Just finish it off. Okay. So there's your how to begin your speech, how to conclude your speech, and hopefully that is helpful for you developing your great informative and persuasive speeches. All right, thank you.